Hello everyone and happy Wednesday. Like I said earlier, today is a good day. I created a happy playlist this morning and it has all my favorite happy songs, including of course, Happy from Pharrell Williams. And it's amazing to me like how listening to those songs can make you happy and just feel so much better. So I would encourage you to make a happy playlist. So if you want mine, maybe I can share it, but I did that this morning and I love it. <clears throat> so um, I'm actually gonna wait just a minute because a lot of people have been following these videos. So I just wanna give people a second to join. But I just got the call from my pathologist and I'm gonna talk about the breakfast I've been having every day. Some people are curious about it and um, it sounds completely disgusting. So <laughs> I was gonna share like how I eat it and what the thought process is behind that. So, so I literally like half an hour ago got the call from my pathologist today. If you watched my previous video, you know that we were waiting on the immunostains um, to come back. That's like the confirmation confirmation. We had gotten the biopsy the core biopsy and the uh, the other one, cyto flow spectrometry or something, I don't know. Uh, so today we got the immunostains back and he said it's officially Hodgkin's and that, um, he's so funny, like, I'm sorry guys. I just have to stop for a second. I really do want ideas, so drop them below for an appropriate thank you pathologist gift like I can't think of something I'm like he's a guy so flowers don't work but um, maybe they do I don't know it's just here's the deal he was so kind every time he had to talk to me or deliver news to me and how often does somebody that delivers bad news get thanked so I'm trying to think of a thank you gift um, but if you have an idea please let me know seriously drop it below Anyway, so he called, and he, he also is like a, like a little bit awkward like in his presentation, so it really makes me laugh. So he was like, it's definitely Hodgkin's, but um, he's like, I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to think about the strain. <laughs> I was like, what? So I guess like you look at the stains and the cell structure, and you also look at um, the like tissue biopsy or something. I don't know. I think it's it's very complicated, I'm sure, which is why it's taking him extra time. But the way he said it just totally cracked me up. He was like, I'm gonna have to spend some time thinking about that. Like, okay, like go think about it and then just tell me what it is. I don't know. But I think the point is, he's always been very kind in that like he wants to keep me updated. He does not wait to call me until he has all the information because he knows I'm waiting for him to call me. So that's like a major, major reason that I'm so appreciative for him because he's considerate of my feelings and he understands that when he says, I'm gonna call you on Wednesday, all we're doing on Wednesday is waiting for him to call. So as soon as he gets any piece of the information, he tells me and he doesn't wait until he has everything. So I've been very appreciative of that because I feel like it's very respectful of the emotional process that we're going through right now. So that's why I wanna thank him. But, um, so definitely Hodgkin's, but there's like five different kinds of Hodgkin's that you can get. So um, we have to wait for him to think about it. <laughs> it just cracks me up the way he said that. We have to wait for him to figure that out. But um, he asked me, he said, uh, do, have you thought about where you wanna get treatment? Some people like to go to Columbus, like have you thought about that yet? And I said, yeah, we've been doing a lot of research. Um, we are thinking about Cancer Treatment Centers of America, which is in Chicago, and we're also thinking about OSU, CCC, and he's like, both of those are great. They will want these results. I will mail them to you. You can get a second opinion on them. I'm totally good with that, um, which is great because everybody has been saying get a second, third, fourth opinion. So what we're going to do is we're picking our top choices and we're going to get opinions and treatment plans we're going to meet everybody at all of our top choices and then we're going to make a decision basically i mean if they all come back with the same plan then basically we just have to like choose who we vibe best with um but i'm going to be really honest i'm going to talk about the breakfast thing in a second but i'm going to be really honest and like one of the things i think i've been struggling with the most is 
I'm a very, very, I'm so much like eat yourself well um, mentality, like food can kill you or food can heal you. And I've used food and herbs to fix so many issues in my life that it's very difficult for me to be like, why can't I do this with cancer? Um, so it's very mentally um, challenging for me to have everyone in the alternative world and the holistic world and the integrative world tell me that this is a specific cancer that I should use chemotherapy for. Like it's very, that was the first time I heard that. It was an extreme shock to me be, just because of the way I live my life and the way I've gotten like so much healthier doing nutrition and using herbal supplements and all these things. And I really, really, because I've seen personally and with my clients, like what a difference it makes, I believe in it so much that it was just really difficult for me to start even considering chemotherapy as an option because the other part of it is like, well, it's your lymph system and your lymph system is like your detox system. So isn't this just like fundamentally like a detox problem, you know? And I know it's more complicated than that. You, I've talked about it in some of my other videos, like one, this started first of all, before I got healthy. This, I have pictures that show that this is in me since 2016, at least it was probably starting before that. So there's a lot going on in my life then that probably contributed, stress, environmental, toxins, whatever. Lymphoma is highly related and correlated to environmental uh, toxicity. And, you know, I shared how I was raised by a nuclear power plant that let off all this stuff in the air. There was a radiation leak. leak. I drank all the tap water. I mean, I did all these things. So you're, this is one of those things that, like, I'm literally never going to have the answer to. I'm never going to know why. I'm never going to know the exact timeline. It does make me feel better to sort of piece it together and think about this. A lot of this probably started developing before I was healthy because that encourages me not only to stay um, healthy, <clears throat> not only to stay healthy like during the process, but also keep it in remission obviously after. Like I absolutely believe in the power of food. Yeah, one of the many tools, exactly. And that's the thing is like, I think what really fr started frustrating me is that it's one of many, it's not the only one. And I so, Sorry, I'm going to try not to cry. I so want it to be the only one. <laughs> I've done really good not crying in public so far, but I haven't really said that out loud. So I know it's one of many, and I know it's, it is what it is. Um, I just think it was such a shock, like, to start thinking about that. And it is funny because, like, so many people have been like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> if Kylie gets cancer, we're all going to die <laughs> because I'm so healthy. So, like, I get it. Um, but, again, you know, trying to make the timeline. I'm, not, I'm never going to have the answers as to why. But, um, but I do. It does make me feel a little bit better that everything that I've done has only helped maybe slowed it down. Um that, you know, it's going to help me through the process to feel good and to have energy. You guys are so sweet. Um, so anyways, on that note, I'm doing as much as I can right now to just, you know, basically it's like the way I eat normally, but it's like on steroids. <laughs> so, so how I'm eating right now, this is sort of what I'm doing. And I think, um, I'm I, okay. So first of all, I'm actually going to be working with, um, like a naturopath that works in like integrative oncology a lot. So she's going to be able to advise me through the process. So she's going to talk to me, um, as I get treatment plans, as I make decisions, she's going to, um, she's going to walk me through, you know, every time I get treatment and, and sort of help me navigate. So that's going to be really helpful. <clears throat> but um, she's going to help with the emotional side of things too. Cause she works with people that do that all the time, which is going to be really helpful. Um, so one of the things I think is going to make me feel better through the process is doing this is, is, is really embracing like what I do know and what I do have control over, which is my food. Um, and so 
one of the things that I've been doing is the Budwig protocol, and that's what I was going to talk about. Sorry. <laughs> I'll get to it, I promise. I have notes up here because this is very new to me. This is actually not something I had ever heard about. Um, and we've probably all heard about the Gerson therapy, which is like juicing and coffee enemas and stuff like that. Um, but I had never heard about the Budwig therapy until recently when I found like that there was this other woman with Hodgkin's that she actually did eat herself well. Now, she was the only so far that I can tell or that I have found she's the only Hodgkin's so Hodgkin's is like less than one percent of all cancers um so I mean we should celebrate I made it to the one percent um but <clears throat> she's the only uh person that I saw like did the whole nutrition thing for Hodgkin's there may be more but she's the one I saw anyways she Budwig is how I found out through her is how I found out about it. So what it is, is it's, you've seen me, it looks like yogurt, but it's not, it's cottage cheese, which I think is incredibly disgusting, you guys. I hate cottage cheese, like so bad. But this doesn't taste bad. So it's cottage cheese, but you have to get like a specific kind of cottage cheese. Um, so let me see if I can uh, see what they said here. I think basically it has to be, it has to be organic. I think it's supposed to be like one to 2%. And there's a reason for that. Cause normally when I talk to my clients, I'm like, don't get anything that has the fat taken out of it. Cause you're denaturing the product. But in this specific instance, it has to be a certain percent because that's what allows it to blend with the flaxseed oil. So this is cottage cheese and flaxseed oil. And I'm going to, I'm literally just going to read it because I never had heard about this before. So a chemical reaction takes place when the sulf sulfidryl groups in cork or which is a type of cheese or cottage cheese bind with the, un uh, the unsaturated fatty acids in flaxseed oil. So there's like a chemical reaction that happens. And this reaction allows the flax seed to become water soluble and enter into a cell to supply energy. So it's supposed to be helping your cells because what, what is cancer? I mean, like the very foundation, it's like cells gone rogue, right? So this is a cell supportive thing. Um, so you have to get like a certain kind of cottage cheese, organic, obviously it has to be a certain percentage of fat because I guess that, uh, helps the flaxseed blend into it. So you do the cottage cheese, you do the flaxseed oil, and you literally take like a hand mixer and blend it all together. And it's not done until all the flaxseed oil is absorbed into the cottage cheese. And then you know you've kind of done that chemical reaction, you've blended it together, you've created this Budwig protocol thing. You let it sit for a few minutes and you can add other stuff. And this is where it starts to taste good because if you just ate that, I would probably like vomit every morning. I hate cottage cheese. So this is what allows me to eat it. It, um, I'll add some stevia drops to it, some fruit and some nuts. And this morning I actually, um, I added a little bit of almond butter on the side too. So then it's kind of like you dress it up like yogurt a little bit. Um, but basically you're supposed to eat every, eat it every single day. So I've been doing it for breakfast and, um, <clears throat> I've heard like different, I know it does sound awful, Kate. I promise it's not that bad. I thought it was going to be horrible too. Believe it or not, all the salads, I've been loving the salads. So basically the rest of my day, this is my plan. I do Budweig for breakfast, maybe some other stuff, because believe it or not, it's like a million calories. It still doesn't fill me up, so i got to eat other stuff. So I have Budweig for breakfast, and then, the, and then I have Shakeology, which I soup up with some collagen, because that's one of the only protein sources that I get through the day, because I'm basically going vegetarian right now. Now, just to clarify, I don't think that meat causes cancer, okay? I don't believe that, especially when you're choosing like grass-fed organic pasture-raised sources. However, when you have a tumor, there's the considerations of anything that can help it grow. And so, and anything that may stimulate cell growth and stuff like that. So it's a little bit of a different consideration when you actually have a physical tumor. Um, and so I am sort of vegetarian right now, only for that reason. But the, um, Breakfast has a lot of protein in it, and then my Shakeology, and then I'll add collagen, has a lot of protein and vegetables in it. And then the rest of the day is basically vegetables. So I'm having a lot of salads, a lot of green smoothies, things like that. Um, and then the other thing I'm incorporating is intermittent fasting. So I'm not eating from 5 p.m. at night to 8 a.m. in the morning. So I'm kind of incorporating a lot of different things into um, my nutritional approach which again, just like kind of helps me feel like I'm doing something, like I have a little bit of control, um, like I'm giving my body what it needs, I'm setting myself up for success before I go some, through something that can potentially knock me on my ass. 
And um, so I just want to be as healthy as I possibly can as we go through this process. So that's sort of what I'm doing. If you guys have any questions, um, let me know. I'm trying to find, oh, here it is, where it talks about the type of cottage cheese. Um, okay, yeah. It says purchasing lower quality cottage cheese inhibits the necessary chemical reaction from occurring between the sulfidryl groups and fatty acids. Preservatives and hormones and poor quality cheeses coupled with high heat pasteurization processes destroy the quality sulfur containing protein. So that's kind of why you have to choose a specific kind. But then you can flavor it up and make it taste good. So basically, Budwig for breakfast, Shakeology is where I get a lot of my protein and the Budwig, and then tons of vegetables and juicing and smoothies and salads. And um, I'm mostly vegetarian. I'm not really, I'm kind of avoiding meat. Although when we go out for Valentine's Day, I'll probably have some meat for dinner. <laughs> so that's the other thing. I was talking to someone yesterday and they were like, Kylene, as you go through this process, um, don't let anybody tell you that nutrition doesn't make a difference, but also don't be so religious about it that, you know, if, you, if you're feeling bad or um, you go through some treatment and you're really tired and you're really, really craving like one of your comfort foods, don't feel bad about, doing that, you know? Um, so it's just really cool. I have a lot of really encouraging, supportive people on my team. Um, it's been a huge learning curve. Oh my gosh, you guys. I never thought I would come on and say I've officially been diagnosed with cancer. Like I never in a million years thought that that was going to be my reality, but it is. And um, so I'm just learning as much as I can. And I'm sure it's going to <laughs> I'm sure it's going to impact the education and the posting and my podcast and everything that I put out this year. It's probably going to be centered around what I'm learning because um, that's where my mind is going to be out. So I hope that it's still encouraging to you guys. I'm also really interested in this cookbook that I got. It was like an anti-cancer cookbook. And again, it's a lot of foods that I would normally eat. You know, a lot of bone broth, soups, vegetables, salads, things like that. But she put it into perspective with um, things that I would never think about, which even just getting it to mentally prepare for this process has been helpful because she was talking about, you know, as you go through treatment, your, um, your, uh, how hungry you are, your appetite, sorry, your appetite wanes or sometimes it's really good and sometimes it's not and sometimes you're tired and so she was like, here is the list of stuff that you should force yourself to eat. Like if you go through this and you're not hungry at all, and of course it's like a lot of bone broths and soups and stuff, here's um, more of like a normal day. And here are the recipes that you can use. And then here's like if you're really, really hungry. And so she just lays it all out. And it's so helpful because that's stuff that I never would have thought, you know, like I don't know how to prepare. I don't know what I'm going to experience. I don't know what to think ahead, you know. So just even having tools like that is just really helpful. And then I think what we're probably going to do once we decide on a treatment process is, um, is um, you know, set up our schedule because, there's the possibility that we will be traveling. Um, like I said, one of the options that we're considering is in Chicago. So I may be treated there or they may send me home with stuff. Um, so we kind of have to figure all that out in the next month or so. And then, you know, when you set up your treatment schedule, it's going to be um, working your food around that, you know, like cooking ahead of time so that you have a lot of stuff for when you're really tired um you know doing all of that but I've been yeah exactly Kate like it's just stuff I never would have thought about on my own so thank goodness for people that give you these resources um so yeah it's just a lot to think about just keep praying um I think still my biggest concern is Patrick this is this is literally like I was thinking about it today like he just does not deserve this in his life um I don't want to say it makes me angry, but it does make me a little angry. Um, I'm going to cry again. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> like, you just, like, it's not fair. Not for me. I don't really care what I have to go through. Um, it's just not fair that he, he has to go through it all again. It was very frustrating because it's like, I know this isn't true, you guys. I know this is not true. But it just seems like some people go through life and nothing 
really major ever happens to them. They just live their life and it's okay. And I'm not wishing bad things on them at all. But it's just frustrating sometimes because it's like, with Patrick and me, it's like you go through this road and then you get like this major shit pile. <laughs> and then you have to clean it off or climb over it or make way through it or hold your nose or whatever it is you do to deal with it. And then you walk along and things are great and then you have another shit pile. And I, that sounds so negative. And it, again, it's not really about me. I'm just very frustrated because Patrick is like the best person I've ever met in my life. And he's so positive and he's so kind to everyone. And he's so giving all the time. And it's like, can we just have a phase where he doesn't have to give? I know that it's going to be fine. And we have each other. And, like, I'm not, I'm not worried about the outcome. I mean, I know that sounds weird, but I'm not, um, really. That's not what bothers me. I think it's, I don't want to be a burden to him. I know he doesn't view it that way, but it's so stressful for him. It's so stressful, and it just it does not feel fair that, like, he's given this to deal with after the past 10 years of his life. So, I think that's the most, I think that's one of the hardest things I'm having to deal with right now, to be, to be honest with you. That and losing my hair because I see a lot of Hodgkin survivors have lost their hair. And I've literally tried to grow my hair out for three, three years, you guys. <laughs> I'm telling you of all the things to worry about. I was telling someone today, I'm like, I'm going to get like the longest wig. So if I have to go through this, I'm going to have longer hair. <laughs> and then maybe it will be pink. I don't know. You can't judge me through this process. Um... And then, you know, Keegan, too, like, it just sucks so bad. Like, he, um, he's actually really, really strong, um, and he's been doing really great. Um, he's like, you know, I'm not really worried. Mom's, like, the healthiest person in the world. I don't know, like, if the reality has really hit him, but the other day, you know, he was crying because he was like, we don't know what stage it is. We don't know, you know, you might have cancer, all this kind of stuff, so... He is upset about it. I think it's more like subconscious for him. Um, I don't know that he understands everything that's going on. So it's just, it's just stress, you know. It's just like, again, we can handle it and we can do it and there's a plan and all these things. But if I could take the stress away from Patrick, if I could... Um, take the worry away. I think that's the biggest thing that I would do, you know. Um, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. So the next steps really, we are oh, just, inter <laughs> we're interviewing people more or less, connecting with people and um, figuring out who we vibe with. I do need someone that's going to be a little integrative in terms of, um, you know, recognizing that my whole life is based around nutrition and that's what I believe and I need them not to roll their eyes at it. So um, we're going to kind of have to just interview people and figure out what's your treatment plan? What's your treatment plan? The one thing that seems really promising about Cancer Treatment Centers of America is, first of all, they fly you there, which is like mind blowing. Um, and like right now, everything, we're getting information in pieces and then we have to wait and we get more information and then we have to meet this doctor. If you go there, basically it's bing, bang, boom. It's like two, three days. Any testing that you haven't gotten yet, they'll finish it there. So like the imaging, for example, to see like where it is in my body and all that kind of stuff, um, that would be just done right away. Within two or three days, I would meet like every doctor, like the hematologist and the oncologist, and, like all these people. What whoever my team is, I'd get them like all at the same time. 
So that sounds really promising. Um, I have a friend who has a connection at OSU. I guess there's a really, really great doctor for Hodgkin's at OSU. Um, so that's the other one we're kind of thinking of right now. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm doing the, the diet so that I can um, do what I believe and feed my cells and keep the healthy cells healthy and maybe knock off a couple of the... Um, with a couple of the rogue ones and um, to support my body through the process and then I'm um, gonna just kind of see what my options are in the next couple weeks I am actually traveling at the end of this month I'll be in California so soak up all the vitamin D and take a vacation before my life completely changes it's not really a vacation it's a business retreat but still I'm gonna view it as like this moment that I have and I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna come back and we're going to hit the ground running. So sorry guys. I didn't mean to cry, um, on screen, but <laughs> real life I posted this morning. I can't really help it. It I'm totally fine. And then it's like a truck hits me and it's very overwhelming. Um, so just thanks for praying. And if you've gotten anything from this video, please pray for Patrick. Um, just for all of us to kind of stay positive and, uh, stay the course. So thanks again for all your prayers. You guys, I can't, I cannot express to you how much it means to us. So thank you. Bye.